This video was brought to you by our book, Brexit the Colouring Book. Get 25% off the brand new third edition by using code SAUSAGE. This weekend, leaders from some of the world's biggest nations headed to Cornwall for the G7 summit, with Johnson hoping that the meeting would cement Britain's global status. The weather definitely didn't disappoint, but one topic certainly did rain on Johnson's parade. So in this video, let's explain how Brexit divided the G7, and why Dominic Raab even described French President Macron as offensive. Yeah, I think it is offensive. I Expecting Brexit not to come up as an issue during the G7 meeting was likely optimistic. I mean, just look at the countries inside the G7. It's clear a whole bunch of these leaders are going to be on the European side, especially when you remember Biden's proud Irish roots. Johnson might have been able to smooth over these disagreements and focus on other topics if it weren't for one major problem, the Northern Irish border. Just before the G7 meeting, the UK and EU met in London to try and resolve the issues associated with the border and the so-called sausage war. Now, we don't have time to cover this in detail, and if you want more context, we released a video about it last week, which is linked in the description. But essentially, the UK and EU have come to blows yet again over the border. This is certainly a complex matter. With the Republic of Ireland in the EU, Northern Ireland in the UK, but also in the EU's customs area, and the UK in neither, working out how goods can pass between these different sides gets complicated. The Northern Ireland Protocol was supposed to solve this issue, setting out a roadmap for the border, but with the UK unilaterally changing implementation dates without the EU's consent breaking international law, trust and cooperation is diminishing. As such, many, especially European leaders, are worried about what's going to happen as the next milestone for the border gets closer. Will Britain once again unilaterally delay the implementation of checks that apply to products such as the infamous sausages? And could this threaten the Good Friday Agreement? Well, the G7 leaders certainly made their voices heard on this matter over the weekend. The major issue here seems to be mistrust. The fear that the UK isn't a trusted partner after its decision to act unilaterally. And this is a message that was sent to Johnson hard on Saturday morning. In a so-called triple whammy of meetings, Johnson met with Macron and Merkel before meeting with Ursula von der Leyen, with the three supposedly making their frustration clear. A source within the meeting with Macron reported that the French leader said that a reset of their relationship was needed, something that could only happen if Johnson keeps his word with the Europeans, as well as insisting that the Northern Ireland Protocol has already been signed and agreed by both sides, and as such, isn't up for renegotiation. When Johnson asked France's leader how he'd feel if sausages couldn't be moved from Toulouse to Paris, Macron retorted that Toulouse and Paris were on the same geographical territory. Northern Ireland is on an island. Dominic Raab took this as Macron denying that Northern Ireland was part of Britain. And while that's not quite clear, it didn't stop Raab from describing Macron as insulting in an interview with the BBC. Did President Macron of France describe Northern Ireland as being not a proper full part of the UK? Um, actually, what I can tell you is uh, various EU figures here in Carbis Bay, but frankly for months now and years, have characterised Northern Ireland as somehow a separate country. And that is wrong. Is it offensive? There. Yeah, I think it is offensive. Are we, again, what we want is a bit of respect from the other side, a bit of flexibility, a bit of goodwill. Okay. Biden already made his feelings known before the meeting even began, remarking last week that he was concerned by the UK's strategy, and that a UK-US deal was contingent on the protection of the Good Friday Agreement, hinting that even the UK's transatlantic ally might not be on side, with remarks from Trudeau also suggesting an allegiance with the European cause. The UK insists that the EU are being sticklers for the rules, not offering enough flexibility and showing the worst of EU bureaucracy. But regardless of who's to blame, the risk is that at the G7, instead of projecting Britain as a global power, the UK just showed real signs for distrust. Britain might not love the enforcement of the rules or their partner in the deal, but no one made them sign it, so it's pretty reasonable to query why they're happy to break the agreement so quickly, and what they'll break next. 
With the topic of Brexit supposedly seeping into other discussions and permeating the weekend as a whole, the UK's former ambassador to the US pondered that the lesson of this week is that you can't have a global Britain that is genuinely respected and influential and impactful around the world if people doubt your bona fides. There is no point in writing new Atlantic charters which depend on mutual trust, mutual confidence and the rule of law when you're operating as chancers. Many suspect that following this meeting and the two sides thrashing it out, that this issue could be resolved soon. But if not, some worry that it could damage Britain's independent reputation before global Britain even truly gets going. Before we finish, if you want 25% off our book, Brexit the Colouring Book, then be sure to use the code SAUSAGE. The new book features 25 total images from the entire Brexit story, taking you through the whole timeline, letting you colour and remember the history of the process. Find out more and pre-order your copy by clicking the link in the description. This offer ends on Thursday. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.